Um, one population, you see, what we must have um, an ensured uh, supply. The other thing is CITES. We have to have CITES permission. Mm -hmm. Now, there is a, there is a population of cheetah caught from Somalia, in Somalia, mm -hmm. which would be the closest to us in that mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. uh, lorry is handling that. But they are all caught there illegally for illegal export to the sheikhs across the, the Red Sea. Mm -hmm. And they are all tamed. And they are not uh, properly reared. They have been captured from Daos. They have captured from all over the place. They are like, they are tamed, domesticated practically. The second thing is that Somali land is, I think, been blacklisted by CITES. We will never get permission from CITES to export them. So, this is all these are problems we have to consider. We, we have to have a legal CITES cleared export so that we export them. We are a founding member. Actually, India was the first chairman of CITES and we don't want to bypass or break the CITES. One, Secondly, we must have an insured supply and the whole thing, after all our efforts, will depend upon the quality of the animals brought in. We don't want animals which will let us down and let, first of all, let themselves down. What and about thirdly, yeah. in a short supply. So, from that point of view, what is your suggestion? As where do we get them from? South Africa, Namibia? Have you considered Ethiopia? Because uh, there's uh, no, they don't have it. They don't have that many. They don't have that many. No, no, they don't have that many. There were never that many there. And they it, it is Somaliland, most Somalia. The Horn of Africa. Um, it, it's easier. The cheetah are there, but right down. So, uh, Ethiopia is high country. Um, there are no cheetahs in a wash national park. There are no cheetahs further up north in the Omo Valley. There are only a few, and they, that is not on. Actually, uh, there were there are cheetahs in Omo. Yes, and most of them have been cut, but there are they are there because they are uh, there. But uh, but the but people they, wear them. They are very few, very Jeep. few, and Jeep. they are not there to spare. They are not there. We need we need animals which are available, and there is, as I said, a a, 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 a short supply. Uh, that and then uh, the anyway. Uh, so that is one important consideration. The the other thing is that um, in the case of um, the release, I wanted to ask. We have been advised, uh, uh, the technical uh, thing is that uh, when we release them from an enclosure, the larger enclosure the better, I take your point well, um, the, uh, the females should be released first and then the males. Would you agree to that? It's very hard because to Because he says the males run away faster. If the female... Um, uh, uh, think, or would it be other way around? What is your experience? Which should be, maybe coalition, but which sex should be released first, male or female? Um, you know, as I've never done it in my life, I can rely only on two official records and in each area it was different. Absolutely different because in, in some every case. Oh. Yes, because it depends on environment, it depends on origin of animals and their personal experience and how well they bond together. Everything depends because you might release females first and they will stay closer. You will release males second and they will go far away from those females or vice versa. You know, all animals are so different. Uh, just one example. When I was working in Arabian Emirates, um, I supposed to breed cheetahs. And what we used to do in our other places, like in, in uh, America where I was working there, in some Europe, in Russia, 
we used to place male into females in enclosure while we um, keep her in the cage and then vice versa we close male in the in his cage and release female into his enclosure so basically you can uh, place the female into male's enclosure and he will mate with her perfectly when they meet when she's ready and she's in heat and vice versa too uh, and it's easier when the male is mating actually in the female's enclosure because it's her territory but you won't believe only one case in my life but it happened I prepared the female, she's in heat, he's stuttering, she, he's just eager to come and mate. He's running across uh, along the fence and female is rolling, she's ready to mate. I open the door in between and male steps into the her enclosure and immediately he turns and goes in her throat. Because he felt now that it's in his territory there is intruder. He forgot that it's a female in heat. But of course the heat stopped she was in shock i separated them it took me three months and then in three months i gently introduced her in his enclosure and he was so happy to see her and he mated with her so all situations are different all animals are different you know uh, i was coming to some zoos and before i come to the zoo for example uh the uh, supervisor is asking me some questions i answer questions i ask questions too and then in the uh, in the end i come and see what's going on and you might see so small details which you can't even get before you uh, before you know those animals you see so for example when you um purchase some animals already it's it's easier because you can pass experience you can tell me this cheetah has this character that what we encountered and um it's easy to give advice how to put them together what to do because all individuals like humans are different so basically when you have a group of females or separate females and you have a few males it depends on how strong bones are do i have males who are coming from the same leader and if they're really active or they're tame they depend on people they're very shy they're not sure of themselves so that's how you can consider where to release them and who would be the first one you can release even all of them together you know it doesn't matter at the same time you can release males in one area females in the other one yeah um one uh, prospect is of a facility near finda reserve in south africa you know finda i um um that uh, so they, we're actually getting less south uh, africa pinda as well north of uh, uh, pinda pinda you mean pinda yes so what i've been to the reserve but i have not seen the facility uh -huh. um, there are they are breeding and uh, there is a facility there and they may be offering us what do you think of that organization uh you know i read all their publications i'm in touch with uh, um uh, with actually skinner and um what is now the name Jesus Christ. anyway so um they did a great job and with years they really improved this program of translocation and releasing of cheetahs as all facilities in south africa they have the same common problem problem their uh their parks are fenced and they have human um uh uh population which is maintained by humans so uh because cheetahs sometimes succeed really well in uh some years they have a problem of overpopulating of cheetahs so they have to exchange males or females with other parks uh but in your case it's a little bit different so their experience is brilliant because hunter luke hunter actually you know he can give you really great advices on that also because you know he's on the person on the ground and um I would say that um, uh, if you're talking about, yes, there is one interesting thing that behavior of cheetahs who are natively born and raised in a certain area is totally, completely different from those uh, who were translocated. For example, there is interesting thing that translocated cheetahs sometimes stay at the same prey for one or two or three days feeding from the same carcass, while cheetahs don't do that. Uh, the reason is that they feel more uh, secure because you know their previous experience before they were released tell them that there are no competitors so they actually of course they adjust to environment but um, most of them are like that also some cheetahs move very far some cheetahs settle very close to the area where they were um, uh, released um, the, uh, 
basically what you have to consider in the future is uh, when you introduce some cheetahs first and then you have a set second wave, it will be more difficult for the second wave to settle because those who will be already settled will fight for the territory badly. And especially if you have a coalition which is already in the area and then you release a single male, even if it's at the same time but in the other area, these male um, tend to be fail because they will fight to death. And unfortunately, only translocated cheetahs uh, display such weird behavior. They fight to death and they actually kill and eat intruder. It never happens in the wild. Uh, it happens the cheetahs fight. They might injure it, uh, each other. We've been uh, witnessing um, fighting of coalition of five males with singletons but none of them had even single wound or scratch. It's a lot of fighting, it's a lot of biting, but still they um, uh, go um, like in different um, um, opposite directions without injuring. <coughs> but translocated, uh, translocated cheetahs behave differently. Also, in Southern Africa, there are known cases where local population, native population in this certain area doesn't um, uh, welcome intruders, those who were reintroduced, they kill them. So that's another thing. That's why it's very difficult uh, to predict how, uh, what will happen with the second wave. So that's why it's better if you release as many as possible, which um, this area can really keep. So they will settle with each other. Thank you so much. Unfortunately, we're running out of time. We're um, actually well over. We could have continued this conversation uh, much more. I'll connect all of you so you can stay in touch with each other and we can all hope that this plan to reintroduce cheetahs actually happens and then we can all work together to make sure it's a success. Rather than come out uh, of the forest.